meanwhile, as we're talking about the, the war raging on, is Israeli innovation abroad, it surprisingly has not stopped. Our senior U.S. correspondent Mike Wagenheim has more in this report. Israeli innovation has served as a way to move the country forward, even in times of strife. With the global high-tech market already facing a downturn, the effects of October 7th on the Israeli sector have the potential to be devastating. But entrepreneur Ero Margalit says his startup city, New York, is thriving. Here in the hub, we have 38 companies, Israeli companies that are operating and trying to conquer the U.S. market, the North American market. So the fact that they can continue, the fact that they have strong goals, that they work on category definitions, uh, makes them stronger and makes the industry in Israel uh, stronger. And you'll see a big rebound when the war is ending. You'll see a diplomatic phase and you'll see the economy come together, we hope, in a big way forward. That includes ambitious goals for 2024, rather than letting the war take an adverse toll. On the contrary, we're getting together, we're congregating, we're strategizing, we're having the sales and marketing organizations work very closely with the development teams in Israel. We have strong partnerships between Israelis, Americans, Europeans, sometimes people in Asia, in order to build large businesses, to meet the customers, to show them that we're here, because the real victory in Israel is not just on a battlefield, it's continuing the high-tech sector uh, to thrive like it has been over the past 20 years. And among the fields thriving right now is cybersecurity. Whether it's large banks, corporations, small businesses, or governments, the more bad actors you have on the web, the more you need cyber protection. Take Federe, which is working to undo Hamas's financing infrastructure. Using artificial intelligence to detect money laundering and fraud, Federe software scans millions of financial transactions, alerting banks to potential misdeeds. So if you think about the way maybe banks used, used to work decades ago was to have a rule. So if this transaction comes from here or is of this amount, then it's good, then it's bad. Terrorist organization, uh, financial crime, people know this really well and they can work around the rules. So what you need to do is use very advanced AI to detect the risk of something being bad. Data models will understand normality very quickly. So you look at data, you understand what's normal. So by doing that, you very quickly understand what's not normal and you weed out those non-normal transactions. And this is where your teams at banks, at uh, fintechs, at governments, this is where they spend their time looking at those things that don't quite look right. We call it that intuitive AI to really understand, oh, that doesn't quite look right. Other pro-Israel financial actors like Brock Pierce say their technologies, like the Tether cryptocurrency that Pierce co-founded, can be used to crack down on Hamas's funding avenues. There are things like know your customer technologies, and actually this technology is even more capable, right? You follow the money, right? It's very hard to follow paper bills. It's also very hard to follow money moving through the banking system because the left hand doesn't really talk to the right. With this technology, every transaction is visible on a blockchain. So the minute you identify a suspicious transaction or bad actor, you can see everywhere it's been immediately. So it allows you to act more swiftly. And again, because it involves the internet, IP addresses and otherwise, we're actually in a better position to to act than we are with, call it, traditional finance. From New York City, Mike Wagenheim, I-24 News.